top five most haunted places in America. Everything from mansions to penitentiaries, there's no shortage of haunted sites in the United States, but certain places easily stand out when ghosts are mentioned. The five locations on this list are considered so sinister and malevolent anyone interested in ghosts would love to visit them. These are the top five most haunted places in America. Number five. Moundsville Penitentiary Located in Moundsville, West Virginia, the penitentiary here first opened its doors to inmates in 1866. During the time, only a temporary wooden facility was in place as construction continued until the main stone buildings were completed 10 years later. By the time the stones were cemented in place, Moundsville became a revolutionary prison. Not only did it have a gorgeous, gothic-style facade, but it boasted of quality cells and facilities. The first few years it functioned, it had accommodations for 251 inmates. Soon, other facilities were added, including a carpentry shop, paint and wagon shop, stone yard, bakery, tailor, and hospital. It was completely self-sufficient, but like everything does, over time the prison deteriorated. It became crowded, and by 1929, a single 5 by 7 foot cell, once used by a single inmate, squeezed together three grown men. On October 8, 1929, the prison saw one of its many homicides. The inmate, R.D. Wall, was attacked by three other prisoners using makeshift shivs for being a snitch. With the overcrowding, soon several riots and violence erupted on a regular basis. On November 7, 1979, 15 prisoners escaped. Then the prison saw a severe riot in 1986 that lasted for two whole days, leaving three inmates dead. Later on in the year, the West Virginia Supreme Court proclaimed the tiny jail cells to be a cruel and unusual punishment, forcing the penitentiary to close for good in 1995. With a deep, dark, and violent history, it's no surprise that since its closure, this place has been subject to many tales of ghosts and hauntings. Approximately 36 murders happened within the prison walls. Plus, there were the countless inmates who died of natural causes while staying there. Many of those who died were buried at the cemetery next to the prison, especially the inmates without families. To top it off, the area where the prison stands was once an Indian burial ground to begin with. A year after it was decommissioned, the penitentiary opened again with former guards giving haunted tours and telling stories about the prison to an interested audience. Horror stories were brought to the forefront thanks to shows like MTV's Fear, wherein they placed contestants inside the prison for two days, hoping to confirm whether the hauntings were real. Since then, various channels, including the Discovery Channel, Sci-Fi, and ABC have created specials or shot on location focusing on the haunted aspect of Moundsville. Those who visit mention that there are known hot spots of activity inside. These include the chapel, the death row area, the shower cages, and an area called the Sugar Shack. This last one was a recreational space where death row inmates were hung prior to the use of the electric chair. One observed phenomenon is the turning of the circular entrance gate. This particular gate was used to separate arriving inmates from the prison warden's quarters. On occasion, the gate has been known to move by itself, turning even without anyone there, as if the prisoners and inmates are still arriving. Today, part of the prison is used as a training facility. Its gymnasium is still used to handle overflow of inmates from other prisons, and the rest is open to haunted ghost tours. Number 4. Winchester Mystery House after the heir to the Winchester rifle, William Winchester, died from tuberculosis, he left behind a fortune to his wife Sarah. The Williams family was known for creating the world-famous Winchester rifle, a weapon described as the gun that won the West. According to the story, Sarah was advised by a Boston medium channeling her husband to travel west and build a home for herself and for the spirits of people who had fallen or gotten killed using Winchester rifles. Sarah left New Haven, Connecticut, and eventually ended up in San Jose, California. It was here that she purchased an unfinished farmhouse in 1884 and started building what is now known as the Winchester Mystery House. 
Carpenters were hired to work on the house 24 hours a day. They were paid at a higher price than what the minimum wage was at the time so they could keep on building. For 38 years, construction continued on this house. Sarah didn't employ an architect or have a master blueprint to follow. Instead, she ordered carpenters to add to the building haphazardly until it was transformed into what it is now. As a result, there are stairs that lead to a wall, doors that lead to empty rooms or sometimes even nowhere, small inch-sized closets, windows overlooking other rooms and more. She also ordered trap doors, secret rooms, skylights in the floor, weird stained glass windows or ones with unusual Shakespearean quotes. There are also doors that open to sheer drops below. In the end, the home not only looked odd because of the many details it had, but it boasted of 10,000 windows, 950 doors, 40 stairways, 3 elevators, 6 kitchens, and 47 fireplaces. It was revolutionary for its time with indoor showers, electricity, wool insulation, and a sewage system. However, despite all this, no one seems to know for sure how many rooms are actually in the house. Before it was transformed into a tourist attraction and restored, the new owners kept coming up with different numbers when they did a count. However, the estimated number is approximately 160. Even more bizarre is Sarah's panache for the number 13. This number repeats in the number of windows, window panes, and stairways. She even signed her will 13 times and has 13 bathrooms in the house with the 13th one containing 13 windows by itself. Those who hear of the house's bizarre construction and layout say Sarah had believed the ghost of the rifle victims had come to haunt her, causing her misfortune. In a bid to confuse these spirits, she created the bizarre structure hoping to escape her tormentors and gain some peace. Of course, others claim Sarah was simply crazy. But historians believe she may have worked on the house to help stave off depression and the constant building of the home reminded her of the things she and her husband loved the most, creating an architecture. While it's true she was a complete recluse, even turning away Teddy Roosevelt when he visited in an attempt to see her, Sarah actually lived with 18 servants, 18 gardeners, and a host of workers. Today the home is said to be haunted by ghosts and strange things are said to happen behind closed doors. While the servants say the house is just creepy but far from haunted, those who visit say the scariest area is probably the third floor. It's the same area where the servants and caretakers stay. They say while on the third floor, you can even hear other people inside the home and you'll feel truly separated from everybody else. Number 3. Lord Baltimore Hotel First built in 1928, the Lord Baltimore Hotel in Baltimore, Maryland stands 22 stories high. Its beautiful facade and design echoes the French Renaissance style and it's decorated by dark red brick veneer with limestone trim over a sturdy steel frame. Over time, ownership of the hotel transferred from one hotel group to another. The last transfer was to Rubel Hotels in 2014, where it received a complete remodeling of the guest rooms and a restoration of the structure's public places. During the Depression era, this hotel was considered the tallest structure in the city. While this should have been an impressive title, it also attracted many who thought their life had no meaning anymore. As a result, nearly 20 people jumped from the building and committed suicide between 1929 and 1932. With such a morbid history, it's no surprise the building is considered one of the scariest and most haunted locations in the country. Some of the most haunted areas include the 19th floor, the basement area, the ballroom, and the penthouse. People who are perceptive to spirits often remark after entering that it feels so crowded because of the amount of spirits in the area. Over the years, staff have reported encountering unusual events while working alone. For instance, a lady named Fran Carter was said to have worked at the hotel for eight years. During that time, Fran was on the 19th floor preparing a small space for a meeting. While prepping a table, she had a view of the open doorway to her left. As she picked up something from the floor, she turned to the doorway in time to see a little girl in a cream-colored dress and shiny black shoes running past the doorway. 
Thinking that this girl was the daughter of a guest who got lost, she ran to the hallway calling out to her, only to find it completely empty. Although Fran was shaken, she gathered her nerves to turn back to the meeting room. Then she saw a couple approaching her in the hallway. The man was older and dressed formally, while the lady was dressed in a ball gown. She asked if they were looking for their granddaughter because she saw her run by. Fran momentarily turned to gesture where she went, but as she turned back towards the couple, they had vanished. Fran was so frightened that she had a guard accompany her until she finished her work. Her experience is echoed by many other guests and workers as well. The appearance of the little girl has become so rampant that she's been nicknamed Molly. Oftentimes she's seen chasing a red ball around the building. She's also been heard crying or throwing a tantrum. Stories say the little girl died on the premises of the hotel along with her entire family. Other workers have reported seeing shadowy figures around hallways only to turn a corner and disappear. One worker said he encountered such a phenomenon on the 6th and 8th floors of the building as well. Today, the hotel has welcomed its ghostly reputation. You can also book a stay here to test your chances with an encounter if you're brave enough. Number 2. Hotel Monte Vista Hotel Monte Vista in Flagstaff, Arizona not only gains points for playing host to luminaries like Bing Crosby, Harry Truman, and John Wayne, but it also sits conveniently along the famous Route 66 highway. The hotel is the first of its kind to have been built using public taxes. It was created in 1924 when a fundraising campaign was raised by V.M. Sliffer, who thought it best to have a hotel where people can stay as they pass through Flagstaff. The hotel eventually became an iconic meeting place for people and is now considered a historic landmark. Room 105 is where Mary Costigan first put up her daily three-hour radio show. Costigan is the first female to be granted a radio broadcasting license, and even a scene from Casablanca was shot in one of the hotel rooms. By the 40s and 50s, Western movies became a big hit in Hollywood. Shooting in nearby Oak Creek Canyon in Sedona, many famous guests began staying at the hotel. It was also during this time when John Wayne brought attention to the hotel's ghostly residence. He said he was visited by one friendly ghost who briefly appeared inside his room. Those who have worked and stayed here have also reported seeing apparitions including a phantom bellboy in room 210. People who have stayed in this room are awakened during the night by someone knocking on the door saying room service has arrived, but each time they open the door, no one is there. In room 305, an elderly woman, who was a long-term guest, would pull her rocking chair by the window and gaze out. Workers and guests have reported seeing the rocking chair moving by itself and sometimes they'll hear knocking coming from the closet. Right next door is room 306, where two prostitutes were killed. Both of them were thrown from the window and out to the street below. Guests in this room have reported the feeling of being watched while male guests wake up feeling as if they can't breathe saying it seems like someone has their hands covering their throat and mouths. Finally, one other creepy apparition is the Meat Man of Room 220. The hotel once had a long-term resident who had a habit of hanging meat from the chandelier of his room. In the 80s, this renter was found dead there, and it took three days before he was even discovered. A maintenance man once worked on the room, and when he left, he turned off the lights and locked the door. However, Minutes later, he returned to find the room in disarray with the linens ripped from the beds, the lights turned on, and the TV running at full blast. Currently, the hotel is still fully operating and accepting guests. Number 1. Thornwood Castle Inn and Gardens Built by Chester Thorne, this 27,000 square foot manor took almost four years to build. Many of the parts were imported from an actual 400-year-old English castle. The stained glass panels are also old, dating back to the 1300s, while the crystal windows were also crafted in England. When it was finally finished in 1911, the structure had 54 rooms, 28 bedrooms, and 22 baths, and dubbed as the only authentic English Tudor castle found in the United States. Chester Thorne lived in the home located in Lakewood, Washington with his wife Anna and their daughter Anita, 
along with 40 servants to care and tend to their needs. During its heyday, it was common for presidents like Theodore Roosevelt and William Howard Taft to host garden parties and dinners in the opulent and elegant space. Over time, the residents of the home passed away and it was sold to Harold St. John. A good four acres was preserved around the main castle along with 110 feet of lakefront. The house changed hands several more times until its current owners purchased it. Owing to its rich history and the title of being an English castle, it's no surprise stories of ghosts and hauntings surrounded the location. Many of the sightings here include that of the owner, Chester Thorne. See, Chester loved the castle so much, some say he never left. He is frequently experienced in one room where reported poltergeist activity is rampant, including lights going on and off, as well as light bulbs even being unscrewed. There are also others who have reported seeing Chester's wife, Anna, sitting in the window seat of her bedroom, looking out into the garden. Anna's room has been transformed into a bridal suite. It still has the original mirror she once used, and it's said sometimes her reflection can be seen in it. Another creepy apparition that manifests is that of a little child. Those who visit the area report seeing a young child standing by the lake, only to rush out and find that no one is there. To add to the elegance and creepy factor of the castle, Thornwood Castle was used for filming Stephen King's miniseries Rose Red in 2002. Today, Thornwood Castle Inn and Garden still functions as a gracious country inn. It's popular for weddings for those who just want an idyllic escape by the lakeside. So there were the top five most haunted places in America. Creepy, unique, and downright scary, these places are still widely visited and popular among those looking to experience a bit of the paranormal. If you ever dare to encounter ghosts, now you know where to find them. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to our channel because every Wednesday and Saturday we have new videos coming out for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.